we're starting off the day with some code reviews. So code reviews are essentially other people have submitted their code. They want to integrate it into the main code base and before it can get merged so customers can use it, we review the code. Other engineers look at the code, make sure it's all good to go, and then it gets merged. And so when an engineer submits something for review, they open a pull request. And so they're asking other engineers to pull down the code, review it, and then give it an approval if they like it. If they don't like it, they leave comments. So the two pull requests or code submissions that I'm reviewing today are, one has to do with changing the tag on one of our metrics. We had a really specific value in one of our metrics, and now we're gonna make it a little bit less specific with this new attribute or this new property that's gonna replace the old property. We'll review that, and then another one is actually creating a pipeline. So a pipeline is something you can use to automate tasks. It has an input, it does a series of operations and then it spits out an output. A lot of times the pipeline will have a series of steps it takes in order to produce that output and then it's usually triggered by something. In this case, this pipeline will be triggered when a new pull request or code submission is opened up for review and it will run some validations on that pull request when it's submitted. And the reason we're doing this is it would suck to like approve a PR, but maybe you forgot to run the tests on the pull request. It gets merged and it breaks something. And so these validation tasks or this validation pipeline will help validate the code automatically with a few validations before any developer really takes a look at it. The things I'm looking for in a pull request are, is it easy to contribute to? Does it do what the code submit wants it to do, what the description of the code submission is supposed to accomplish. So let's take a look. So this first PR is about metrics and adding the new attribute to some of our metrics. And I left two comments on this PR. One of them someone just responded to. It has to do with for this specific tag, I'm always getting an A as the value of that tag. I'm getting some generic value for the tag when I'm running it locally and I've tried testing it in a few different ways, but the tag does not get populated. And I was able to figure that out using the debugger. And so I placed some breakpoints in my code, checked out what the value is before we even submit it to our metric system. Like before we make the request to like increment a metric, does the tag have the appropriate value or does the attribute, does the property have the appropriate value that we want to send it off with? And it doesn't, it just has generic. So I left a comment saying, when I run this code, this tag is always this value. Is there something I need to set up locally so that the correct value shows up in the debugger? Author of this PR, the person that created the code left a comment saying, are you using this method here? We'll, we'll test this out. The link that was posted is actually a different way of running your code than I've been using in order to run it with the debugger. So I wonder if I can use the debugger, debugger still with this command. Great, and there's a section called how to run in a debug mode. So we'll definitely test this out and see if we can populate that value locally. And then the other comment I left had to do with an environment variable. So we were setting basically the author of this PR created a new environment variable and the name of it felt a little generic to me. Usually I wouldn't care about variable names, call it whatever you want, but when it's an environment variable or something that is a little bit more like used by the entire code base versus just one function, that's when I take a little bit more of a look at it and care about it a little more. So I said, uh, can you explain the reasoning behind, behind naming this environment variable, you know, what it is? What do you think of and then I left a suggestion for as a different thing. All right, so now the second PR, this one I took a look at and it's already running in one of our pipeline environments. And so I was able to look at it, try to run it. It looked like it was working. The one comment I left, uh, it looked like there's a file that probably shouldn't have been included in the PR. It's like old underscore and then the name of a file. So it looks like it's an old version of maybe this pipeline file. I left a comment saying, can you explain explain why this file is included in the PR. So we'll see, maybe there is an explanation for it. I always ask a question because you can be wrong. Maybe there's a really good reason that this old file is included in the PR, but good to ask questions if you're not sure. The rest of this looked pretty good. One thing I have to do is confirm that 
that this code is actually being run while there is a job or there is a pipeline that's up and running in our environment I'm not a hundred percent sure if it matches this code so uh, we'll definitely double check that and keep on going with these code reviews so this is really interesting. I have been testing and running our code with a subsection of our code. There's actually a wrapper that goes around our code that's really only used during deployments and used on hosted services. The core business logic of our code lives in this subsection, but then it's wrapped by the things that run our metrics, that run our logging, and that kind of do a bunch of setup that doesn't really have to do with the business logic of the app application. So when I've been running my code, it's just been that section. And now I need to run my code in a different way in order to access some of that other functionality that that wrapper functionality. So now I'm installing a command line tool or a tool I can use in the terminal in order to test my code in that way. And now homebrew is updating, which could take all day really. And then and then we'll be able to install the thing. All right, so using the new way to run the code, it actually spins up a Docker container, so it runs within the Docker container. I was able to get it to work as expected. So now I'm gonna approve the PR. It'll get merged into the code base. Everything looks good. Now for both of my comments, they didn't require any changes. My comments were more to understand what was going on in the code than necessarily like this is wrong or that's wrong or it needs to be changed. And that's what code reviews should be, in my opinion. At least a few of the engineers on the team should understand each part of the code base. And so while one engineer might not understand every single piece if there is a given piece of code that's not working there should still be at least one or two maybe three engineers that are familiar with that section and can help troubleshoot it if something goes wrong obviously the person that wrote it will probably be familiar with it but through code reviews more people can get familiar with that section of the code base in one minute, I have a retro with my team. And so a retro is where you kind of go through what are the things that worked well or are working well? What are the things that are concerning about how the team is working together or what we're working on or how meetings are going or just in general, what is good, what is bad and how we can we approve. So now it is time for that meeting. So I went to the grocery store Got some stuff. Bananas, apples, eggs. And these are pretty much my breakfast most days. And then I also get desserts. This is the best dessert you could possibly find. If you've never had mochi, this is what you wanna get from Trader Joe's. They're so delicious. They had a new flavor of mochi. So it turns out the file that was included in that one PR, it's no longer being used. And so we decided to remove it and that commit has been approved and merged. We also just had our weekly tech talk. So this is where we talk about lots of different things it's kind of a catch-all for things we want to discuss technical discussions this week it happened to be about two technologies that we need to choose between for a data store well it's kind of a data store it's a context storage event driven thing but there are these two technologies we have to decide between so it's that discussion and then the second thing we talked about was where to store certain files and so we already have had a precedent established in the code base. There was a commit made that didn't necessarily go along with that um, because we have recently acquired this new code base. So it was a discussion of like, what do we want to do? How do we want to organize our files in the code base for this particular domain? Now we've reviewed the PRs. The PRs have been merged. We attended several meetings. Now I actually just picked up a new ticket and it has to do with building out some more pipelines in order to deploy our code. Usually these are pretty parameterized and so you can reuse them per microservice, but this 
pipeline is actually the the thing we're trying to deploy is using a technology that is new so we have not deployed a service of this type using this language and this particular framework before there are other teams that have done it i will definitely be looking at their pipelines for what we want to do that is the next ticket is to really build out some of these build and deploy pipelines for this microservice and build means you compile the microservice you get it in a state where you're ready to deploy it and then deploy is you send it out to the servers or to wherever it's going to be hosted and so it could be serverless it could be on a server could be basically to a location where customers will access it so yeah that's what i'm going to be doing next i've built pipelines before so i'm familiar with the pipeline technology and yaml files bash files so we'll do some research and then we'll write the code